When we're working with KineFX, we'll often come across an attribute called REST Transform. This is an attribute which will show up in a lot of nodes. These are some examples of nodes where you'll encounter this attribute. These are nodes which you'll use a lot, but these are not the only examples of where you'll find this attribute. You'll find this in the majority of KineFX nodes. So we'll want to know a couple of things about this attribute. What is the REST Transform attribute? How do we create the actual attribute itself? This is not really an attribute which is automatically created. How do we use it? And what kind of uses does it actually have? So the answer to the question of what the REST Transform actually is, is simple. This is actually just a stored pose for the rig. Basically, we are storing a pose for each joint, and this pose is being stored in a 4x4 matrix attribute. The REST Transform itself is essentially just a default pose for the rig. Normally, you'd consider either a T pose or an A pose to be the default pose for the rig, and this is what we'd usually store in the REST pose. However, that is not necessarily the case, and there are other ways in which we can use this attribute. While a T pose or an A pose is important for the rigger, it's not necessarily important for the animator. It is often better to give animators a rig which is in a relaxed pose. This pose would have a bit of the personality of the character in it and would provide a less rigid starting point than a T pose or an A pose would. And we could use the REST transform to create this kind of pose as well. So essentially, any pose we choose can be used as the base transform for the rig. Although most of the time we'll want this to be our default A pose or T pose, especially when we're using solvers. So the next question is how do we actually create a pose and how do we create a rest pose? It is very useful to know how to store and use poses as attributes. This is not the only way to store poses, nor is it specifically speaking the best, but each method of storing poses has its own drawbacks and its own advantages. This process of storing a pose as an attribute makes it very easy to use that pose as part of the logic of the rig. So first we'll look at just storing a pose. I've created a very basic rig over here. This is just a line which has been converted into a rig. I've done this by adding a name attribute and a transform attribute to the joints. I've then specified that the z-axis is going to be oriented down the length of the bone. This has been done with an orient joints node. To store our pose, we're going to use a KineFX node, and this node is the rig stash pose node. The first input of this node will be set by the rig which we want to place the pose onto. The pose that we want to store as an attribute will be connected to the second input. To create a REST transform, I would simply connect the original rig to the second input as well. The skeleton does not have any transforms applied, so these will be the zero values for the skeleton. By default, the rig attribute pose node will set its attribute name as rest transform. So we'll now have an attribute, and we can view this attribute in the geometry spreadsheet. This is a 4x4 matrix. So we're storing the current pose for each joint on that joint as an attribute. So we'll not always be setting a rest transform. We can store any pose that we want to. For this, I'll get another rig stash pose node. I'll connect the output of the rig stash pose to the new rig stash pose node. I will give this pose a new name. In this case, I'll give this a generic name, pose1. I'll connect this to my rig, and I'm going to modify the rig using a rig pose node. I'll then pose this rig. In this case, I'm making some random rotations. So now we should be storing the updated pose. However, storing the pose means nothing if we cannot access the pose. So the main way to access the pose will be to use the skeleton blend node. We're going to set this node with our rig. We can use the second input to blend between other poses that are passed into this node. We can then register the blend pose, and we can blend between the poses which are passed into the second input. However, when using a stored attribute, we do not need to pass in any poses. When using attributes, we will not be working in the same way, so I'll clear out the blended poses. I will need to update my channel inputs. Clearing out the poses removes the skeleton itself from the blend, and we need to add it again in order to have any blend work. I can then activate the blend pose toggle. By default, this will give us our rest transform. 
I'll change this so we are blending pose 1. We can now blend between our default pose and the pose that we stored in our attribute. So that is the basics of storing and blending poses. So next is the question, what will we actually use the REST transform for? So generally what we're going to use this for is for a comparison pose with a solver. Most of the time we will ignore this, and we will not actually ever interact with this pose, but there are some specific cases where it can be very useful. So here we have a basic rig setup. We're generating our rig off the same line, and I'm generating the basic attributes for the rig as well as the orientations. In the second branch, I'm making a couple of controls. So here we have a control for our effector, as well as our up. So I can then turn on the solver, and we can see the IK solve that we're getting. The solver is working, and the IK chain is pointed towards my control. We also have an up vector which controls the plane of the leg. There are, however, issues with this solve. The main one being that the solve for the leg does not match the original pose for the leg at all. This is a fundamental problem which you do get with IK solvers where you have more than two bones. We can improve on this using the solver. In this case, the solver is an IK solver. And we'll work on the final parameter in the solver, which is the rest angles mode. This has a couple of options. The first of which is compute from targets. This will mean that the skeleton is going to attempt to match the pose that the skeleton had when we first entered this node. So if we zero out our controls, the positions of the joints should match the controls that are being passed into the input for this node. This will give us a better solve straight away. However, in this case, the solve is reversed. To fix this, I'll change the twist offset by 180 degrees. The other option here is to use our rest transform. This would allow us to make sure that the pose tends towards the default pose for the skeleton, which in most cases would be either our T pose or A pose. This option is also probably the better of the two options, since it is not determined by what is coming into the rig. Instead, it is relying on a single default pose which will tend towards. And this is probably the biggest use for the REST transform, which is where we use solvers that we want to have a specific default transform to work with. So if we zero out the solver, we'll see that the leg matches perfectly, and the solver is always going to try and maintain or tend towards this form. So that's the first use case that we're going to look at. The next use case that we're going to look at is setting up custom default poses. Here I have created a very basic network. I'm transferring the poses onto this network, and then I'm going to be able to manipulate this using a pose node. The method that we're going to look at here is more useful when you're doing pure animation. This will not work very well if we're trying to use motion capture, as it will override the motion capture coming into this node. So what we're going to do here is set a custom rest pose, which is not the same as our default pose. And what we can do is we can use a completely different default pose for the pose of the rig from the default pose which we'd use for the solvers. So for our solvers, we'd use the A pose or the T pose. Then we'll have a separate pose which we'll use as the default for posing the rig. So as I stated earlier, it is often a good idea to give a character a bit of a default pose. Basically give the character a bit of a contraposto and a basic facial expression, just to try to get the mood of the character a little bit more and give the character an easier default to work with. This can be a bit better than working with a standard T pose or A pose, which is a very rigid pose to start off. So here I'm going to use pose one for the rest pose transform, and I'll do this instead of using the rest transform. So by itself, this will have no influence on the pose node. However, if we change the mode to be from rest pose, our rig will now use pose 1 as its default pose, and that pose will represent our zeroed values when we zero out the transforms. If we're doing this, it's best to make sure that all of our poses are based off the rest pose. Once again, this will allow us to use the rest pose as our default value, and then we can rotate our joints based off that. So that's the basic of setting up poses. We can use them for quite a lot of things. We can use them for animation. We can also use them to set up default poses for characters. We can also do this in such a way so that the default poses are different to the poses that are required of the solver. And we can use them to give better results for specific solvers. There is one final use that I'm not going to cover now, 
and which I have not covered, and that is we can use the REST transform in order to create our own solvers or to drive parameters. That, however, is very complex. It is also very context sensitive and would require its own videos.